Hi everyone, Nathan here again with another TrueTech troubleshooting tutorial. Today I'd like to talk about scripting objects and how they can help a lifecycle designer create a better code, better forms, uh, more compact forms, and in the midst of that show you another example of an expanding table and how we can use checkboxes to control how the table expands in the rows. So two different things, scripting objects and expanding tables. Um, first of all, scripting objects. What are scripting objects? Uh, scripting objects allow the lifecycle developer to encapsulate code without using a specific event of a specific form object. In other words, it's a, a form object that just contains code and nothing else. And so in our hierarchy here, in our sample form here today, I have a script object called SO and when I highlight that and then open up the script editor I have this entire block of code about 45 lines long that encapsulates a function that we're going to use later when we, sh we talk about checkboxes and expanding tables and if you look at the object name it's just under the hierarchy form.main.so script object and on the hierarchy here, if we closed everything, it's just a variable inside of the main. And we could pull it out if we wanted to outside of the main and just make it attached to the form. Uh, both ways would work. Only thing that changes is how you would reference it when you were in your hierarchy in your object events. So a script object, how do you add it to a project? Well, it's quite simple. You just uh, come up to your your hierarchy and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this script object actually I'm gonna I'm just gonna remove it from the project by right-clicking and let's say I didn't have a script object I wanted to insert one I just need to right-click on the form in our hierarchy and then choose insert script object I'm gonna do that it throws an untitled script object into the variable declarations and then I just need to highlight that name and type my name which is going to be SO. When I do that it forms an empty shell and inside that empty shell I'm going to paste in the function I had in the other one I just deleted. So a script object what does it allow you to do? Well it allows you to it becomes a repository of code basically where um, like in the example I'm going to show you each checkbox I would have to have the same code in it to do the same thing if I didn't have this script object but as it stands with the script object all I have to do under the click event of each checkbox is write one line of code that references the script object so that then my main code can go there and I don't have to keep uh, typing it in or pasting it into each object. Uh, it makes for a cleaner form it makes of course a smaller form the, the footprint of the form is smaller because I didn't have to repeat 45 lines of code four times. So underneath checkbox one I just have one line of code and all it does is reference SO and then the function underneath SO add to table and then throws in a couple of values that that function needs to work. And so that's basically the value of a script object. It just gives you a place to put scripting out, outside of the object you're working with so to save space and to encapsulate your code a little better. It also makes it easier to debug and easier to find somebody else's work and work work through their code. If, if somebody has a habit of leaving code all over the, the document object model, um, it becomes very hard for a, somebody who didn't design the form to troubleshoot problems at the form uh, when they come up. Alright, so this form in particular does a few things. It has a table that is referenced one row and that row is expanded upon by the checking of one of these four checkboxes and the value of the caption of the checkbox gets pasted in the column one and then when you uncheck the checkbox that corresponding row disappears so here checkbox three no longer has a row associated with it checkbox one same and if you delete all of them uncheck all of them then all rows are deleted. 
and of course we can put them all back in whatever order we want. So if I want number four to be first, and then number two, and then number one, I just check them in that order. And the way we accomplish that is with this add to table function inside our script object. So first, how do you call the function? Well, in each checkbox, there's a click event, and in that click event, we're just saying, referencing script object, and then the dot, and we're referencing a function called add to table, and that function has three constraints or three values that are passed into it. One is the value of the table object we want to work with. Two is the caption value, checkbox one in the case of this first button. And then three is the value of the checkbox, meaning is it checking or unchecking the checkbox? Did the click event that the user just instantiate check the box or uncheck the box? And so when we call that function, uh, the, the lifecycle form finds the script object and then takes those three values, puts them into the function, and does its work. Now this function is a little bit too complicated to cover in depth in this video, but basically what happens is if the event is a check event, meaning the check uncheck value is one, it adds the row, and of course it looks to see if a row is already there with no value, and if it is, it adds that row caption to that value. If there is no rows at all, meaning it's all of them been, have been deleted, then it ins adds an instance to the rows and adds the value to that. The else part of this script is referenced when the checkbox is being unchecked. So if it's not being checked, then it has to be being unchecked. There's only on or off. There's no neutral value in my checkboxes here. And so the else takes the value of, of all rows, however many there are at the time, whether there's one, two, three, or four, it iterates through each of them in a for loop, and it cross-references the caption value of the checkbox that was clicked with the caption value of the particular row it's going in the loop. And once it finds the right one, then it removes that instance right here. So very simply, if it's there, remove it. If it's not there, go on to the next row until you find the right one. And of course, when we're checking it, if uh, the blank, if the blank row is there that's put in at the beginning, uh, is the only one there, then give give my caption the value of that. If there's more, if that, if that one has already got a value, then obviously I need to add another row, and so on. So. This is just another example of what you can do with expanding tables in lifecycle. Remember that your row one, which is the row that contains the data from the checkboxes, must be a body row and it must have under the binding tab repeat row for each data item checked. And then of course we have it set to an initial count of one. That's the blank row you see when the form first loads. That's called initial count one and that receives the value of the first checkbox. That must be checked if you want to see that. If you don't see that, it works the same way. It's just it adds to the form. We, I decided to put it in there because my end user wanted one row to be visible in order to help end users know what's going on. Of course, in this example, there's only four checkboxes, so our maximum value is four. But this could go on to as many as you need it to, 200, 300, whatever you wanted it to do. I think in the example of the customer I was helping, they had 36 checkboxes. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Um, we're going to do a lot more with script objects in the future in these tutorials because they uh, help us get to more advanced topics uh, and advanced scripting. I'm sure a lot of you would like to get into. And it really helps your Adobe Lifecycle Forms become very robust and very broad in their application. You can do so many things using JavaScript in your forms that you can't do if you if you avoid JavaScript or if you only use the one line type JavaScript uh, if, if an event is clicked you know delete something or remove something uh, this gives you a lot more versatility and makes the form really work more like an application than just a form as always if you need the code that we used in this example you can go to the blog truecheck-troubleshooting.blogspot.com and find the code listed there. Remember to uh, post comments on YouTube, 
and questions. I love to get comments and questions because it helps me to broaden my example base, to uh, tailor these tutorials to what you guys need and not so much what I've done in my line of work. So ask those hard questions and help us both to learn how to do things. That's where this example came from. A user, a subscriber asked how to do something and I didn't really have an answer so I had to had to delve into it and find out for myself. And so that's where these, these types of videos come from. So the more questions you ask, the more questions I'll answer.